You know what you're doing in the world when you learn Torah? No, you don't know. But did you learn Torah? Yes. Do you know that even to read one letter of the Torah, one letter that is guiding you how to walk in the path of Torah, in the path of truth, it's already called to learn Torah? And you know that if a person is learning Torah, so it means for him like that he kept all 613 mitzvot? Every letter that you read in the Torah, it counts, it means for you like that you kept all Torah mitzvot. But I'm not Jewish. Yeah, I know, so what? But it's still written that if you learn Torah, so you will be rewarded. And even more than that, to do something even smaller than that and to be rewarded even more than that, like Abraham Avinu. That Abraham Avinu, the verse is saying, you know Abraham Avinu, he was not a Jew in the beginning. In his early days, he was not a Jew. And Abraham Avinu believed in Hashem. He believed in the Creator. And what the Creator said on him, that it was counting for him as charity. What we said about charity, that it's saving lives, right? Great. Abraham Avinu, what he did, he believed in Hashem. He believed that there is Father in heaven. He believed that there is a Creator. The verse is saying that he believed in God and it counts for him as charity. Means that when you believe that there is a Creator, you're already saving lives. Oh, you don't believe that? I see. That's a problem. That's why I need to move to Texas. <laughs> but the verse is saying that when you believe in the Creator, so it's like that you gave charity. You gave charity, you saved lives. And you don't believe in that. You don't believe that now, when you're learning Torah, when you believe in Hashem in Barach, so you're keeping the world life and exist. And it's your merit that the world now is rolling and going on. And people are alive and babies are coming to life and families are getting united and people, couples are getting married and because of your holy thoughts, because of your holy desires, because of your pure will, because of your actions. And you have that problem that you listen to the voice of the power of imagination that is telling you, but look who you are. And now you look, and how you sound, and how far you are, and all of those are a bunch of lies. Because he is just describing your body. But you are not your body. You are your soul. You are that part of heaven that lives inside of your body. Because when that person, after 120 years, he passed away, his body is something that even though that we feel sorry, we want to get rid of, because it's not him. It's really not him anymore. So if it's not him now, how can it be that it was him <coughs> one hour earlier? No, it wasn't him. You don't miss the body. You miss his soul. His soul was the one that you were in touch with already before. And a body cannot really be born and really in touch with a soul. It's just a vehicle. You and your car are two separate things. And your body and your soul are two separate things. So you're also not a body. You're a holy soul. That's who you are. And as a holy soul, you need to believe in yourself. And to be happy and proud of who that you are. Because you are a holy soul and that's it. And between the souls, there is no holier soul and a purer soul and a nicer soul. That's only imagination of the world that is full of dividings and limitations. But in the world to come, in the eternal world, there are no definitions. It's all one. The Creator is in exile. The Creator exiled himself into the physical world and covered himself in coverings, in bodies. And those are our bodies. But inside of those coverings, there is only one thing, that is the Creator himself. And that is your soul. 